A few days ago, after feeding the cats and having my early morning cup of tea, I stepped out into the pre-dawn darkness. Walking away from the light cast by the kitchen, I noticed that there were still a few stars visible, but over in the east the light was gradually growing lighter. It would still be a while before the sun peered over the mountains, but all around me the outline of the tree branches and their leaves could be seen, but only because they were silhouetted against the slightly lighter sky. The trunks were still invisible. I knew they were there, of course, but the illusion was that the trunks did not yet exist. They were not yet formed out of the darkness. The thought went through my mind that one could imagine the world was actually recreated every day, manifesting anew out of the void, gradually coming into being out of nothingness. I find this idea relevant for all of us who are striving for personal transformation or evolution. If we can think of the world as being somehow created anew every day, then surely we too re-manifest as well, and thus change is possible. Now, of course, this is allegory. Mysticism aside, we're pretty sure that the world doesn't go away at night, yet something very much like that happens on the micro level in what is poetically called the quantum foam, where particles zip in and out of existence on a scale we cannot imagine. The world is far from being the solid place we envision it in Newtonian physics. This reminded me of one of the holy signs of our ancestors, the rune Berkano, the rune that looks like our modern capital letter B. Edward Thorson connects it with what he calls the mystery of the moment, and what I, in my more poetic moments, think of as the quantum, or the smallest possible unit, of transformation. Barakano, it seems to me, would be a good rune to invoke for the power to change our lives in accordance with our will. This Faustian desire for transformation, for growing, for reaching farther, is one of the hallmarks of the European folk. And for those of us who follow Ausatru, we recall that Odin especially, the very god of the runes, does not want us to worship him, but to imitate him in becoming, in overcoming, in being more than we are now. But whatever your religious faith or lack of one, I urge you to seek the highest in yourself. For in so doing, you honor your ancestors and set the standards for your descendants. To change the world, we must first change ourselves. Or as my friend Joost Turner said, change yourself and you will change thousands. I think he was quoting Yogananda, whom he quite admired. But it is still solid advice for all us sons and daughters of Europa. For in these pivotal times, it is more important than ever that we reach out and influence the attitudes and the opinions of our brothers and sisters. In other words, it's red pill time. Because the existence of our people is not negotiable. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share this with others. Thank you.